I got a really good question from a customer the other day about how to take a photo that comes out of your camera and it comes out in a very specific aspect ratio to put it into something else. Let's say a print, maybe an 8x10 print or a photo book or even something on social media. We all know that that photo that comes out of the camera is not in the same aspect ratio as most of your prints and most of your images for social media. So what happens is, is if you try to put it into a document that that's the, the size, okay, let's say an eight by 10, it's gonna either show you white space on both sides. Now what you could do is maybe enlarge it, which is essentially cropping off parts of the photo, or as we're gonna see in this video, I'm gonna show you a few different ways in Photoshop that you can try to extend the edges a little bit. Okay, with a certain, with the right type of photo, you can make it happen where you can keep exactly what you had in that photo without cropping or getting rid of any part of it and still fill the space that you need to. So pretty cool stuff, even if you haven't had to do it before, I think you'll learn a couple things. Let's go ahead and dive in. Now we're in Photoshop and just to bring you up to speed, because this is where you would use all these techniques, you can't do this inside a Lightroom. Just to bring you up to speed, the person's question revolved around them wanting to print to an 11 by 14. So what I did is I created a new document that was 11 by 14 inches in size here. And then I just pasted in their photos. And remember what they wanted to do was to fill the 11 by 14, but not crop the photo. Okay, which in a sense you're saying, okay, so enlarge it. Yes, if I enlarge it, it's essentially cropping the photo. Okay, we're cropping out parts of the photo and that's, that's not what they wanted to do. Okay, now I'm gonna jump to some other images. We'll come back to these toward the end because I wanna show you the three techniques and then talk about those two photos uh, toward the end there. This first one is my favorite one. The last one is really cool and I bet you you haven't seen it before, but it's just restricted in how often you can use it. But this first one is my favorite way to do it. And that is, I pasted in this photo. So this is pasted into an 11 by 14 document. And again, if I wanted to print to this size, all I could do is enlarge it, which would in turn crop part of the photo. So what I can do is take my, I'm gonna take the rectangular selection tool here, and I'm gonna make a selection of the empty area right at the top there. All right, then I'm gonna head up to the edit menu. I'm gonna go down to content aware fill and I'm gonna let it do its thing and it actually did a really great job. I'm not gonna make this a content aware fill tutorial, but you can add and subtract what Photoshop will consider, which is this green area. You can add or subtract from that depending. And there's a whole bunch of settings you can play around with over here. Again, just to keep on point, I'm not gonna talk about this whole window, lots of tutorials on that. So we'll go in here, click, and then you'll see down here at the output setting, it says output to new layer, current layer, or duplicate. Um, for me, I've got no reason to output it to the current layer. If you thought you might wanna change it, you could do to a new layer, but then you just have to merge them lay later. So I would just output this to the current layer and then come down here and click okay. And now you can see it went in and it filled that. Why did it do a really good job? But maybe there's a little bit of a repeating pattern over here, which I could pretty much you know, fix if I wanted to just grab the clone stamp tool, maybe take a bigger brush sample somewhere and come over here or maybe over, you know, there and paint in. Um, I could probably get rid of that little repeating area pretty easily, but I actually didn't. I thought if you didn't know it was there, nobody else would. Okay. So content aware did a great job because this is a, a pretty easy pattern for it to pick up on. We'll try it down here. Again, make that selection, come up to the edit menu, content aware fill, and see how it does. When we're done, click okay. And actually, I think it did a really good job down there at the bottom, a little bit of a smudgy area that you could clone away if you wanted to, but that would be, that's the go-to method if I ever do need to do this, that's the method that I try to use. Again, lots of good repeating textures and patterns and content aware likes those types of things, so it makes it easy to fix, all right? So that's the first go-to method. Uh, let's command or control Z a couple of times to undo, and let's take a look at the second way. As we do that, a very quick 60 second word from our sponsor, which is always me. Um, I'd invite you to check out my Photoshop system. If you're watching this and some of the tools that we're talking about don't come quite natural to you. Uh, my Photoshop system was built from the ground up for somebody just starting out in Photoshop and only for photographers. Photoshop has 80% of the tools are not meant for photographers. When we cut that all out, it makes it a very approachable program to learn. So we'll talk about things like the main tools that you need, 
talk about layers. We spend a lot of time on layers, selections, and masking, because I think that's the biggest area of Photoshop. We'll also talk about uh, removing distractions, which is huge when it comes to photography. Uh, from there, we'll talk about retouching. I'll uh, we'll also cover color balance, color adjustments, and even some start to finish projects. So if you haven't done it before, make this the year you finally conquer Photoshop. And I know my Photoshop system can help get you there. So I hope you'll swing by and check it out. Back to the tutorial, we can we were working on the second way in which you could fill these areas. And that would be by just copying and pasting part of the photo. So what I would do is something pretty similar to what I did in that first part, which is take that rectangular selection tool and you can hold the space bar key around that lets you move this around if you ever need to. Okay. But I would start making a selection, try to get it up against that edge as good as possible. Make a selection across the image like so, and then just hit copy paste command or control C and command or control V universal keyboard shortcuts for copy and paste in any program anywhere in the world. If you look under the edit menu, you will see them. Okay. So what that did is that put that little, that little part of that layer up onto its own layer. All right. Now I'm going to go into free transform command or control T is the keyboard shortcut. And then what we'll do is we really, we, we don't just want to drag this up and put it there. Although sometimes that could work but we want to drag it up and put it into place. Okay. But what we also want to do is right click inside of it and choose flip vertical. Okay. Hit enter or return. Then you can use your arrow keys to nudge it into place. Now, is that going to create a little weird area up here? It does. I'd argue most people wouldn't know if they didn't see the photo. I mean, some of it looks like a little bit of a mirrored image in some of these places, but a lot of times, you know, what you see is not what everybody else would see. Same thing as before though, you could hold down the option or alt key with the clone stamp tool. So just select your clone stamp tool, hold down option or alt, and then just go and paint into some of those repeating areas there. All right. And if you ever see any of that, mi that mirrored image type of a look, you can just go clone over it and paint and sometimes that'll fix it. Did it do a good job here? I, you know, I'm indifferent on it. Probably not. I like the other method better, but again, sometimes this will work really good. In fact, if we switched over to a photo like this, I think the copy paste method would do just fine. However, I think the last method um, would do just fine. I'm not saying that one it's, you know, it's not one size fits all. So we make our selection copy, paste, hit the move tool, move it up. I don't even need to flip this and it looks fine. But if you did, you could go to free transform, right click inside, flip vertical, and then use your move tool and nudge that into place there. Again, we didn't really need to, to flip it in this case because it worked just fine, but you could do that if you needed to. And then same thing down here. Sure, you go click on that layer to copy paste because if you clicked on the other layer, it was empty down there. So copy, paste, command or control C. Uh, let's try that again. Command or control C for copy, command or control V for paste. Move that down and then command or control T, free transform, flip it vertically, and you would see you can move that into place there. There's a little bit of a mirrored effect down there, not nearly as bad as, as what I thought was in the clouds that we saw, but again, a little bit of creating, creative cloning um, would do a really good job in getting rid of that, okay? And then when you're done, you can just press, uh, you can merge that down. You could just do layer and you can just choose merge down and that will merge that down with the layer below it. So that's a quick, easy way to get it all onto one layer. If you needed to, there's no way, no reason to be non-destructive um, in that case. Okay. So that's the second way. And then the third way, let's command, let's undo quite a bit and let's get back to where we were with this. So back to this photo, the third way is something called content aware scale. It's a tool a lot of people are not familiar with. So let's go, let's go try it on this photo here. Okay. Cause this is, this is a little bit of a harder one. Why is it harder? Cause it's not, a continuous toned area in the part where we want to stretch. Okay. So I'm deliberately picking something more difficult here. Um, I already know from practicing this, 
it's gonna work okay, it's not gonna work perfect, but let's give it a try. The way you do this is you first want to protect parts of the photo. So I know for sure that I don't want the Osprey to change, okay? So I don't want any of that to change. I know that for sure. I know for sure I probably don't want the top of this and any of this to change. So I'm just gonna make a quick lasso selection with the lasso tool. And then we go to select, save selection, and I'll just call this Osprey so it's easy to find later. So just click OK, save selection. It'll get saved, deselect. Now what we're gonna go do is go to edit, content aware scale, okay? And if we just grab this thing, it, it, it actually might do a good job. So give it a try before you, know, you even try to protect an area. It could work and it works okay in this case. It does stretch it a little bit, but it's remember it's content aware. So it's, it's doing some intelligent looking at the photo to say, okay, maybe this area of contrast here compared to the background, maybe he doesn't want that to change. So you can see it's not really changing it. Okay, now if that doesn't work, let's go back here and cancel out and go back in again. If that doesn't work, you could go to the protect option up at the top and I could protect that selection that I saved. And now I can scale this and try scaling it down. You know, you could see you get some interesting things that'll start to stretch and happen to the photo as I do this. So you could also move it into place like so. Uh, you could hold down your shift key and just tell it don't drag the top anymore, maybe, or just drag from one way. Don't be dra don't you know, drag uh, the aspect ratio of this, so it's not going to make it wider. It's just going to make it longer. So you could do that as well. So that would be one way to go. Again, it does tend to stretch a little bit about what's happening up there. So depending on your photo, that may or may not work. Now there's other photos I think it'll work just fine for if I went and tried it on here. And that's hopefully the the whole one of the points that you get with all this is that. There, there is necessarily no perfect right answer to everything. Sometimes a few different ways will work the same. But we make a selection, save that selection, mountain, okay? Deselect, go back here to content aware scale. We would protect the mountain this time and then just drag. You'll see it'll do a pretty good job, right? As it stands right now, I don't know that I would notice a difference. I have a feeling once I start dragging downward, we're gonna start to see some weird <laughs> trees start to emerge from the trees inside of there. Interesting technology. And again, there's lots of places where I think it'll work just fine. On this photo, it's a little bit aggressive for this. If you just had a little bit of area to fill, I think you'd be just fine to try to fill as much of the area as I wanted. I think that's where our problem is gonna come from. All right, so that's your third and final way. Now, let's get back to the, the two photos that sent in because I wanna leave you with, with a thought. And that is, neither none of those techniques work for these photos. So the person that asked me this question, unfortunately, the answer was no, you, nothing, no, none of those three techniques would work for these photos. So if you wanna examine why really quick, look, there's nothing to copy or paste down here at the bottom. There's nothing to stretch. There's nothing content or fill could do. Um, and one of the problems that we have, if there's a couple of things. One is we have a, an area that's not, it's not a continuous toned area. We have the cat's paw in there. Another thing that's almost a showstopper for this one is we have depth of field. So if I were to try to replace the area on the bottom, you can see we have sharp grass up front and blurry grass in the back. It's not gonna be able to fill that in. And I can't replace the area at the top because it's not gonna just put a new cat the cat's cut off. It's not just gonna put a new cat up there. So none of those techniques would work for this photo. The only thing that would work for this photo would to be crop it, all right? So essentially something like this. Now, my thought process back to the person that asked this would be, why wouldn't you do this to begin with? It doesn't hurt the photo in any way. In fact, I think it helps the photo because the original crop has almost half, at least one third of the photo as just blank empty area. Okay, same thing on this photo. 
Again, it's not going to work here. It can't, it can't put a sky with trees in there. It can't fill the Texas license plate and, and can complete it. Um, it can't fill the rest of the truck in there. It's not going to be able to do it. So I would just say crop it. But again, to me, the cropped version of this is a stronger photo. So I'd say don't do unnecessary work. You know, sometimes cropping in on your subject is, is a better alternative than adding space because it shows your subject off a little bit better. So don't do that work if you don't need to. Another thing to keep in mind, we, we of course always wanna try to get it right in camera, okay? There's certain things I don't try to get perfect in camera and that's always the crop because I know that sometimes I print, sometimes I wanna share to social media and if you crop in too tight, while you're taking the photo, you eliminate some of those aspect ratios that you might be able to share to. So it's called shooting loose. It's okay to leave a little bit of space. Of course, you don't wanna take a 24 millimeter lens when the situation calls for 300 and say, oh, I'll just crop it in and post. But at the same time, leave a little bit of breathing room around your subject so that you can move and manipulate it based on how you need to share. Last thing is I've got a really great follow-up tutorial for this. It has nothing to do with this here, but it is a public service announcement. Have you ever double clicked the file and it opens up in the wrong program? Maybe you got a plugin installed and it opens up in there. I've got, it's just, it's just over three minutes and I'm telling you, it'll show you exactly why that's happening and how to fix it so that when you do double click a file and you want it to open in Photoshop or Lightroom or wherever, exactly that will happen.